Oh, we are so blessed. We're so blessed. We're, I, I tell my bunch all the time, we're so blessed, the blessed people call us blessed. <laughs> Is that you too? Oh, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory, who always causes us to triumph. That, that makes you a winner. A winner. You know who the devil is? And he, he's not just a loser, he's the loser. Really, he is. I mean, you've read the back of the book, right? I mean, he will be known throughout eternity as the loser. And you are the winners. The winners already having overcome in the Lord. Well, we've, we've prayed. I know a lot of you've prayed, but let's just be in agreement together for the rest of the service, the rest of the days. Uh, God has a plan, doesn't he? And he's, uh, he's here in our midst. He's our teacher. He's our helper. And uh, he has a word for you. The word for the moment, the time right now. And you want to exercise faith for it, though. I know you know how to do that. Hmm? Yeah, are you? Well, I'm, that's what I'm wondering about. Uh, <laughs> uh, you want to be in faith for revelation and answers for specific things and not just kind of idle alone. And, and, and you, don't, you don't want to uh, wait to be wowed. Do you know what we mean by that? Wait to be wowed. No, you don't want to do that. You want to be in faith for, uh, and you don't have to know all the details, but how many know the Lord knows exactly what you need now? He knows. He knows. And so you want to be in faith for that. So everybody said out loud, Lord. Lord we're, asking, we're asking. And we're in faith. And we're in faith for what we need. For what we need. Right, now. right now. Whatever it is. Whatever it is we'll, receive it, we'll receive it. And not be hearers only. Not be hearers only but by grace. Will be, we'll be doers. 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 Of, the of the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, let's just praise Him a little bit more. Just, just lift up your hands to the Lord. Oh, Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We exalt you. We glorify you. We magnify you. You are so good. You are so gracious. You are so kind. So wonderful. So glorious to us. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, 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 Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, 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 Lord. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Thank you. You can be seated. Thanks. The goodness of God endures forever. His mercy endures forever. You know, receiving from the Lord is uh, similar in some ways to receiving a radio station. You got to be on the right channel to pick it up. 
Did you know that? How many know if you're trying to pick up a FM station in your car, but you got your tuner on the AM band? It's a problem, isn't it? And if you didn't know better, you'd say, well, something's wrong with my radio. And so you could take it to the stereo uh, place and get you some bigger amps put in and get more speakers and bigger speakers put in. And I mean, you can have that thing so wired, and it sounds like bacon frying from two blocks away. I mean, <laughs> and uh, you're still not going to pick it up. And you can even take your car and uh, put it, put the bumper against the building of the radio station <laughs> to where you can't get any closer. <laughs> and you're still not going to pick it up. Right? Amen. So it's not uh, availability of power that makes the difference. It's not, um, you know, how close. That's not the thing. It's the condition of the heart. Oh, come on. Can you see it? You can, but how many know you, you got all that, uh, all those speakers and all that power? That's not going to make you pick it up. All you got to do is tune, though. Tune to the FM band. Tune to the whatever the station number is. And oh, here it comes loud and crystal clear. Stereo, surround sound, whatever it might be. And you know very well and, and clearly what's being said, what's being sung, what's being played. And so it is with the things of the Lord. Uh, uh, this will be a good study if you're interested in this kind of thing. Uh, what, where's scripture for that, Brother Keith? Well, there's numerous ones. Here's one phrase, prepare your heart. Have you ever read that in the scripture? The Lord would tell people sometimes, prepare. I'm going to come visit you tomorrow. Prepare. Prepare your hearts. What does that mean? That means dial her in. Tune her in. Right? What's the receiving band from the Lord? Humility. Faith, expectation, right? Yes. And here's a big one. Willingness. Yes. Willingness. If you're trying to hear something from the Lord, but you're unwilling to do something, it's like you're on the wrong band to even pick it up. Because see, the Lord knows before he ever speaks to you, he knows whether you're willing to hear it or not before he ever gives it to you. I know some uh, years ago, the Lord was dealing with, began to deal with me about going out on the road more. This is, oh, 25 years ago. And uh, I was already busy preaching. I mean, I was speaking sometimes uh, 15, 18 times a week where I was. And I just felt like that was plenty. You know, and, and that on the weekend, I'm going to rest. And uh, it'd come up in my spirit every once in a while when uh, I was praying or when I'd get quiet about going out on the road more and, uh, and having healing meetings. And, uh, of course, when you don't want something to be the Lord, <laughs> what are you laughing about? You've been there, haven't you? Well, you when you don't want something to be the Lord, you can go through mental gymnastics <laughs> trying to make it something else. Yeah. Hmm? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And uh, well, one of the things that people do most often is this one. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and the moment you do that, you have opened the door for the enemy to come confuse you now. The moment. Uh, once, once you've heard the truth, if you don't want that, what else is there to believe? <laughs> Only lies. And uh, th th this, is, this may be better preaching than you know right now. Uh, if, uh, well, I didn't intend to talk about this, but go to 1 Thessalonians, please. Let's look at this for a moment. 
You know, for years, we'd, uh, the Lord would give you something, you'd start a different direction, and I'd say, well, this is not my message, but, this is not my message, but, I must have said that a hundred times, this is not my message, but, one day the Lord spoke to my heart, he, my heart, he said, if I say that's your message, that's what it is. I say, yes, sir, that would be right. So, I quit saying that. First Thessalonians. <laughs> Somebody answer that. <laughs> First Thessalonians. Excuse me, Second Thessalonians. That's why I was having trouble finding. Second Thessalonians, the uh, second chapter. Second Thessalonians, second chapter and the tenth verse. Two ten, Second Thessalonians. He said, "With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they what? They received not what." Didn't you say they didn't receive the truth? They didn't receive what? The love of the truth. I'm going to make a statement. It'll sound big to you at first, but uh, think about it. I love the truth more than anything, period. More than anybody, more than anything, more than my own life. It's a big statement. I mean it. So should you. I said, so should you. I love the truth more than anything. That's a big statement. Or anybody. Somebody said, I thought you were supposed to love the Lord. That's what I just got through saying. He is the truth. I thought you were supposed to love the Word. That's what I just said. Jesus said, thy word is truth. And if you don't, then you are making yourself subject to deception. And you're the one who did it. How many know James talks about people who are self-deluded, self-deceived? But you see how it works. You, you, you have to open the door. The, the devil is the deceiver. And he's quite accomplished at what he does. He's been doing, he's been deceiving men and women for thousands of years, and he's quite good at it. He's subtle. You know, think about the very character of what deception is. If a person is deceived, do they know they are deceived? Uh-uh. When you're deceived, you're believing a lie is true. You believing something wrong is right, and you don't know it. But what folk don't realize, it's again and again their own fault that they got that way. People think if you're deceived, it's not your fault. But according to this, it is. Well, we're off to a big start here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> can you take it? Yes. Huh? Can you receive it? Yes. You know, I, I think the Lord could, could let us get into some things that were a little more uh, meat and substantive if we could bear it, yes. right? And you know, really, by reason of time, a whole bunch of us should be maturing, shouldn't we? And not just only be able to receive milk. I said should, should. Uh, he said, verse 10, they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them what? Strong what? Delusion that they should what? Believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What makes you subject to and susceptible to delusion and deception? 
Hmm? Because truth came to you and you did not love it. We, we need to really watch about hearing truth and thinking, I don't like that. And you can, you can sit and not say a word, can't you? You can even smile while something's being taught or preached and, and you can go, hmm, I just don't know about that. I just don't know if I like that, like that or not. And, and our, numerous times people have come to me over the years and said, Brother Keith, I got a question about such and such. And, and sometimes the Bible is just so plain uh, that you just, you know, you don't have to think about it. You can give them three verses right off the top of your head and go, that's it. And I, more than once people have looked at me and said, uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to pray about that. <laughs> That's a subtle way of saying, I don't know that I love that. I don't know that I... Why? Because in the light of the truth, you see where you're wrong. And you see what needs to be changed. And if you love your way more than you love the truth, then you don't want to hear that right now. Reckon what the Lord's getting us ready for. <laughs> then you don't want to hear that right now. And that is, my friend, it is so dangerous. Folks don't even realize what they're doing. Because when you hear and see truth, and you don't like it, and you don't want it, what else is there to believe besides the truth? only lies. If you don't want the truth, there's nothing else to believe but a lie. The scripture says in the latter times that people would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. What does that mean? I wrote in the margin of my Bible next to that verse, uh, Teacher, teacher, scratch my ear. Tell me what I want to hear. <laughs> That's, that is as opposed to the truth. Tell me what I want to hear as opposed to the truth. Say it out loud, everybody. I love the truth. I love the truth. More than I love what I want. More than I love my way. I love the truth. How many love the truth enough that if it shows you up in the wrong, so be it. Let, let me see it. Right? I'm, I'm ready to change. I'm willing to change. I, I'm not so foolish as to think I have already arrived at total Christ-like perfection. Sure, some stuff needs to be changed about me. Sure, some of my ways of thinking need to be changed. Right now, right here. Right? How many got enough understanding to know you need some help right now? You need some changes. You and me need some changes right here, right now. So why would we be shocked to get some correction? You know, uh, you see, I see it all the time. People are just shocked and annoyed when correction comes. Aren't they? People are. Uh, again and again, people are shocked. They're surprised like, hmm, they're correcting me. Why would it be such a shock unless you thought you have arrived at Christ-like perfection and require no more correction? Shock, like, is, is that a correction? Are they correcting me? You didn't know you needed some? <laughs> You're in worse shape than we thought. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Read it again. 
They receive not the love of the truth. Come on, tell me, how about you in the truth? Do you love the truth? Come on, say it again, I love the truth. I love the truth. I love the truth more than anything, more than anybody, more than my own life. Now see, we, uh, uh, many have gone before us who have died for the gospel's sake, have been martyred. They proved they love the truth more than their own life. And we've got to be there whether we're called upon to lay our life down or not tomorrow or next year. Still on a daily basis, we should be willing to sacrifice whatever need be for the truth's sake, for the gospel's sake. Because it is the power of salvation, isn't it? Yes. To everyone that believes. If we don't get the truth out, then nothing we're doing is worth anything. Yes, sir. And it's not our intellect, it's not our eloquence, it's not our abilities that can save and deliver men and women. Come on, tell me what it is. Truth, it's the truth. It's the truth. You know, there's much talk has been in different times and places about spiritual warfare. And the Bible talks about spiritual warfare. But sometimes people have got some funny ideas in their mind about what it is. So they, they dress up in, in army outfits and, and go to the highest place and scream at the devil all day. And, 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 and you know, they, they get in a mentality warfare. But how many understand screaming just by itself is flesh? Sweat by itself, just flesh. Right? Those things just of in and of themselves are just flesh and can have no effect on spiritual adversaries. And yet, you want to attack the kingdom of darkness? You want to be involved in real warfare? Let me tell you what to do. Rush out and tell somebody the truth. <laughs> you, you, just, you just launched a missile. We're firing this morning. Amen. I said we're firing this morning. Anytime the truth is going out, the truth is going out from this church. The truth is going out from this ministry on a daily basis. Like missiles. And when it explodes, how many know I don't care if you got 935 demons covering your house. And people are so blind that they ain't got a clue about God. When the glorious light of the gospel shines unto those people, all the devils in hell can't keep them from getting born again. All the power of darkness cannot compare. That's what John was talking about when he talked about the light shined and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness, one translation says, could not overpower it. Darkness has no defense against light. You never walked into a dark room and turn on the light switch and saw darkness roll about halfway back. <laughs> and a struggle ensue. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, darkness has no defense against light. And truth, the truth, is the light. Jesus is the truth. He is the light. Say it again. I love the truth. 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 More than how I feel. More than what I thought I wanted. I love the truth. I love the truth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's just, let's close our eyes and lift our hands for just a moment and let's, let's thank the Lord for the truth. Lord, we thank you for the truth that we walk in already. Thank you for the truth you've revealed to us from years past. Oh, how precious it is in our eyes. Lord, we love your word. We love your truth. Nothing, nothing compares. Nothing is more important. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your truth. We are willing to receive of your truth. Hallelujah. Give us eyes to see it, ears to hear it, hearts to receive it. And we say, by faith, we are willing. We're willing to receive whatever it would be. If it's truth, we'll accept it, no matter what it shines and shows forth, how, how different it is from what we've thought. That's what we want. That's what we love above all. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Master. Well, go to John, please. Gospel account of John. John 5. I'll see if I can go this way. You know, uh, when it comes to growing up and developing spiritually, it has more to do with hindrances of developing than it is waiting on the Lord. Just like a, a young child, um, everything, if everything's normal, they're going to grow, right? You don't have to get up every morning and look at them and say, grow. Grow, I'm believing for you to grow. No, if everything's normal and they're getting fed and exercise, everything's right, they're going to grow. Right? Fifteen years pass, they're not going to be an infant. Right? If they are, something's wrong. Because the normal natural progression is growth. It ha it's going to happen. If they're being fed right and they're exercising like they should and everything's right, they will grow, they will develop. Spiritually, the same thing is true. When we're born again, if we're fed right and we're, you know, things are the way they're supposed to be, we will grow, we will develop. And if after 20 years we're still baby Christians, it's because of hindrances. Hence, something is hindering, something is impeding our growth, something abnormal, something wrong is hindering and impeding our growth. So what needs to happen is that needs to be changed and removed, doesn't it? So we can go on and grow. And here's another side of it. The thing that would help you to grow the quickest would probably make you mad. <laughs> and annoy you the most. If it's been hindering you for years, it's not like the Lord's never talked to you about it. It's something that you dulled yourself to over a period of time. I know the Lord showed me this one time. Uh, again and again, things that like this that people are looking for, they're praying years later going, Lord, show me what it is. And it's like this. <laughs> Lord, show me what it is. Lord, I, I know something's there. And if you'd just show me <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Lord, I want to see it. <laughs> if, you, if you could just help me with it, Lord, I... But see, the thing is, this has been here for 18 years. And when something's been here for 18 years, you get used to it. You get used to it. You, you don't notice that there's a problem. After 18 years, do you? This is normal. And yet people keep praying, oh, Lord, please show me, whatever it is. Because you still got problems. You got hindrances. But now you've convinced yourself you don't know what in the world could be causing it. It's a mystery. <laughs> Listen, guys, everything is simple. The answer to every challenge, I don't care if you've been having the same problems in an area, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, if you've been having the same problems over and over again, the answer is simple, stone simple. Do not, do not let your, yourself be deceived into thinking, oh, this is going to require probably an angel visit or being caught up to heaven and... <laughs> You know, this, this is, no, 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 it's simple. But 
at different points in people's life, they see and hear truth, but if that's really the truth, and I'm going to yield to it, I'm going to have to change. And that's where the trouble comes in. And if you really don't want to change, then this is what you can do. You can go, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and the moment you do it, the devil knows you're open to believing something other than the truth. And so he steps right into that open door and he goes, right, we don't know what that is. <laughs> That's not, that's not the Lord. That's not, surely the word's not really saying that. No, that's, and if you look hard enough, you can find people that'll give you another version. <laughs> if you look hard enough, you'll find people that can tell you, no, that's passed away. No, that doesn't apply to us nowadays. No, that's not, that's not, I know it says that, but that's not really what it means. It, you look hard enough, you can find people that will give you alternatives. But what, what are the alternatives to the truth? All lies. And the problem is, you can comfort yourself that, okay, I don't have to change, but you're still going to have the problems. Year after year after year after year. Not going to get rid of them. Because what makes you free? Not the lies. There's only one thing that sets you free. Only one thing that makes you free. The truth. The truth makes you free. I said the thing that would cause you, the, the, the brakes to come off and cause the restrictions and hindrances to come off of you and allow you to leap forward in growth is also the most challenging thing to you solically and physically and the thing that could make you the maddest. But if you could hear it, I said if you could hear it and if you'd receive it, it'd be the thing, it'd just be like, you know, how, how you try to take off in your car but you forgot the emergency brake is on. It'd be just like turning that thing off, just lurch forward and your spiritual growth just, just come up. Sensitivity. After years and years of this, if you could go, this? You mean this? Well, Lord, you, you talked to me about that 15 years ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's dangerous to ignore light. Once the Lord has shown us something, if you don't walk in it, you go into darkness. What is darkness? Confusion. There are all kind of people around. They, have, they act like they're confused about the problems. And they got problems in their marriage. They got problems with their finances. They got problems, problems, problems. And they act like it's a great mystery. Why I'm having these problems? I just don't know. Why? And I need... You know, we need to get a hundred of the best prayers in the country. And, and we need to get the whole church to fast. And, and we need to find out. And here's what's going on. If we are open enough, the Lord can say things this week. If we're on the right band. Hmm? What, what, what's the right band, among other things? Willingness. 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 Are you in John? Did you go to John? I thought it was John 5, but I can't get to that yet. So John uh, 7. Y'all believing with me this morning? I got a nice little message right here. <laughs> but we're believing God, right? Hmm? The Lord's interested in our growth. He's interested in our development. And he cares that people are hurting 
and in problems, his people, faith people, tongue talking, confession making, right? Healing and prosperity believing people, yet, yet struggling with problems. Same problems year after year after year. And a lot of times people hide them. They hide them. Because they, they don't want people to know I still got these same problems because I'm supposed to be a faith man. I'm supposed to be a faith woman. But it's not your faith that's the problem. Faith is not the answer to everything. Now put your rocks down. <laughs> there, there's more in the Bible than faith. Right? Faith is important. Don't misunderstand. Faith, yes. But uh, you can make confessions, 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 confessions. You can uh, have everybody and their brothers a CD series and you can have it going in your house night and day uh, but unless you are willing to do it and some things are going to require you putting your flesh under there are times you don't want to do the word oh boy somebody said are you sure I'm sure uh, there, every one of us, every one of us, there are times when you don't want to do the will of God. Yes. This is not me. Yes, you. Yes. And you're the main one I'm talking to. <laughs> the servant is not above his master. Jesus is the master. And there were times he didn't want to do the will of the Father. Who says, When? When he prayed, not my will, but yours be done. He was recalling from it. He didn't want to do it. But he showed his great strength. He showed his great love for the Father. And he submitted. Didn't he? So if there's times when he didn't want to do it, I know. There's times when you don't want to do it. But can you do it even when you don't want to? Can you? Can you submit yourself? Can you get a hold of yourself? You say, yes, you are going to do the word. I don't care how you feel today. I don't care how annoyed you are at them. You are going to walk in love. I don't care how you think. I don't care what they said and did. You're going to do this. The word says this and you're going to do it. The truth is this and you're going to do it. Can you do that by the grace of God? You can, just like the master did. Just like he did. Here's back to this prerequisite for receiving from him. Getting his will. Getting his, his, his truth. Verse 16 of John 7. John 7, 16. Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Jesus never took credit for one message he ever preached. Not one. You, you don't want to either. If it's good, it was God. If it's bad, it was you. Real simple. Every time. Right? If it was good, if it was great, if people got helped, if it was powerful, you could not have come up with it on your own. You did not come up, you did not figure it out. It was revealed to you. Right? It was given to you, it was given through you. That's what Jesus said. See, the, these guys were amazed at Jesus' teaching and preaching. He, he had no formal education. Like, like the doctors of the law did. And yet, the revelation, the power, the flow, the words, they were just amazed. They were awestruck. And they asked about it. And, and uh, a lot of people would have said, well, 
While others were playing, I was praying. You got to study. I burned the midnight oil. I, 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 he never said it. Not once. He never said about how much he prayed and how much he studied. No, no, no. What did he say? It's not mine. It's not mine. The Father gave it to me. Did you know you can study till your eyes glaze over and you fall out your chair and not get a thing? At least not worth preaching. You can come up with some stuff, <laughs> but she's better off not, not telling it. <laughs> unless the Lord, unless the Lord reaches inside you and turns on the light, you'll never see it. The Bible talked about through, uh, when after, through wisdom, man didn't know God. You cannot find God through study alone. Did you hear me? You cannot find God through study alone. There are, there are numerous institutions, religious ones in particular, where people spend all night and day and year and decade after decade studying about God from merely an intellectual pursuit and after decades, these people don't know anything about God. It requires a love for God and a faith in God and a willingness to believe what you don't understand and a willingness to do what you're not willing to do after the flesh. A willingness to lay it aside, submit to His will and do it when you don't understand it and when part of you didn't want to. If you've got that, you're the kind of person he'll give these things to. That's not just my thinking. Are you there? My doctrine's not mine, but his that sent me. Verse 17. If any man will do his will. Now, other translations say it like this. If any man wills to do his will is willing to do his will, or wills to do his will, he shall know. If you're willing to do his will, you will know. He will know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether it be of myself. When you're endeavoring to find direction for your life, this is one of the biggest prerequisites. I've told people before that they just work themselves up into a frenzy. Fear is an awful thing. And even among so called, you know, faith people and charismatic folks, so many times people are full of fear when it comes to their future. I've had, I've had preachers come to me before and, Brother, Brother Keith, pray for me, pray for me. I, uh, man, I got some big things coming up and I just don't want to miss God. And I've, I've, well, see, I already see fear all over them. Can you see it? And not knocking them because you and I have yielded to it at different times. That's fear. Is it okay? No. None of it's okay. Oh, Brother Keith, I, I just don't know what the deal is. I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I just can't seem to get it. I, I just can't seem to hear the Lord. I, 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 I don't want to miss it. And I, I, this is important. I've got to hear from God. Pray. Well, there's no need in me praying until you make some changes. That's fear. You're afraid you're going to miss it. And there is another spiritual law. Your fears will come on you. And if you're in enough fear that you're going to miss it, tell me what's probably going to happen. You're going to miss it. Even though you don't want to. You don't want to. I 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 knew I would. <laughs> See, you were believing for it. Fear is a perverted form of faith. You, you were believing for it. And the Bible never said you can't hear from God. The scripture said, my sheep know my voice. 
and a stranger's voice, they will not follow. The Bible says you have an unction of the Holy One and you know all things. Now that's how you got to talk. I said that's how you got to talk all the time. When thoughts and feelings of fear come to you about missing it, about going the wrong way, about staying when you should leave or leaving when you should stay or whatever the case might be, you need to open up your mouth right then and say, I will do the right thing. The Lord is leading me. He is directing me. He's guiding my steps. I'm his sheep. I know his voice. I won't follow a strange voice. I won't go the wrong way. He will help me. I will do the right thing. Now you got to say it when your head's screaming. Yeah, but I don't know what to do. Say, shut up. Shut up, head. I will do the right thing. The Lord will help me. I'll go the right way because he's leading me. You got to talk faith. I have an anointing of the Holy One and I know everything I need to know. And you, we, we should operate in this anointing of knowing. I've operated in it in stronger degrees at times than at other times, and it is wonderful. There, there's so, a so much higher level of this available to most of us than what we've walked in. I, I wish I could say every day, but it hadn't been. But there's been days of my life that from the time I got up, I didn't waver about anything. I knew what to do. Every hour, I just knew what to do. Friend, that's freedom. I, well, one of the biggest torments in life is not knowing, isn't it? Not knowing, not being sure. Is, is this me? Is this the Lord? Is this right? Is it not right? Are you sure that's the way? I see nodding heads all over the room. <laughs> But do you know whose fault it is that we're that way? <laughs> well, I didn't intend to talk about this this morning. Though. Do you know whose fault it is? I'm talking about believers now. That believers are that way. It's our own fault. What makes a person so unsure? So insecure, it is previous rejection and ignoring of truth. It's particularly applicable to us, you and me, because we have heard enough word. We have heard enough word to float the planet around the sun <laughs> and back. But it's not the hearer of the word that's liberated. It's not the hearer of the word that grows up automatically and develops. It's not the hearer of the word that's automatically set free. I know some years ago I was in a conference and a great crowd of people and I was, I was just in attendance. I wasn't speaking and I was looking around just happy to be there and, and a lot of minister friends of mine and a lot of other people. I'm just thinking, glory to God, what a wonderful meeting. And the Lord spoke to me. I don't mean I heard a voice, but inside me. He said, Keith, uh, uh, there's a misconception among your group. I thought, a misconception? I said, Lord, what is it? What is a misconception? He said that if you'll get in the Word enough, it'll solve all your problems. I thought, yep, yeah, we pretty much believe that. <laughs> that if you get in the Word enough, it'll solve all your problems. He said, wrong. It's only the doer of the Word that gets results. You can go to meetings like this all your life and stay in bondage. He was talking to me. You can have everybody in their brother's book and tape series. 
and you'll get no results in any area. You can be able to quote it. You can be able to rattle off the verses and, and all the points and the Greek definitions. Right? And stay in bondage year after year after year. Unless and until you're willing to do. And how many know when you begin to do the word, it's going to change your lifestyle. Yes. Right? When you begin to do the word, you got to change. You got to change. And there are a whole lot of people that are virtually pulling their hair in frustration over their continued problems. Because they think, well, I'm a word person. I got all this word in me and, and I've been to all these meetings and I've heard all these things and yet I still got this giant mess that I've had for the last 12 and a half years. It, it's not a great mystery, my friend. We have to come back to this. And what will, call, what will allow us to be open and able to see it and get free from self-deception and delusion? We're right here. Verse 17, if any man what? Will do his will. Or like I said, if you look up the phrases and other translations bear it out, wills to do his will. Is willing to do his will. What will happen? What will happen? Oh, come on, this is a good word, friends. What will happen? That's what I was talking about earlier. That, that knowing. That knowing. Oh, Lord, help me to get this out the way it ought to be. I, let, let me go back to, I, I remember, I'm thinking about a specific day that uh, I had gotten closer to the Lord and I, I, I was in, in, in more full obedience. And, and I remember, I'm thinking about the details. I the, woke up before I even got out of bed. I knew numerous things through the day that, that I should do and say. And every time I'd go somewhere, it was like insecurity wasn't even there. It was like second guessing and questioning wasn't even in the room. You just knew. And if anybody questioned it, it didn't bother you because you knew. Do you understand? There's never a day that God is on the throne and he has to pause and wonder and question. Should I do this or should I do that? Never. 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 He knows the end from the beginning. He always knows. He never operates in guessing, wondering, ifs and maybes. So I say, yeah, but he's God and I'm not. Yes, but the Holy One is inside you. The Holy Spirit is inside you and he is not a vacillating, fearful spirit. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. He didn't give us the spirit of being intimidated or being insecure or of wondering and wavering. We have an anointing of the Holy One and we know, we know, we know. If you don't know, if you live in that terrible place of ambiguity and being torn in vacillation, it's not right. It's wrong. You're not supposed to live that way and it's you that can change it. I said, it's you that can change it. But how can you change it? You got to be willing. And that's no small thing now. I, I used to teach uh, at Ramah a course called Submission and Authority. And uh, this happened, I don't know how many times. People would come to me and say, I got your class next uh, semester. And I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, since submission's always been easy for me. <laughs> you know, I, I like submission. <laughs> and I usually just smiled, didn't say a word because I didn't have time to get into it. But I know right away they are clueless <laughs> about submission. Because submission is not easy for anybody. Are y'all with me now? Submission is not easy for anybody. And if you think, well, yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy for me, then you don't know what it is. I'm sorry, but you don't. 
You hear people say this sometimes. Well, now, usually I submit to them, but on this, I just don't agree. You know what really has happened? They've been able to operate in agreement with these people up until now. And this is really the first opportunity they've had to submit. And they're blowing it, failing the test. Submission is only occurring when your will is different from their will. Different. Was submission easy for the master? Jesus. Was it easy for him? Have you read in Hebrews about how he prayed, strong crying and tears? Remember that? How you, you read in the, uh, in the garden where he sweat blood? Over what? What was that over? Well, listen to the prayer. Father, all things are possible with you. If it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Hmm? What's this over? Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Is his will then now at this particular moment different from the Father's will? A lot of people don't want to admit that. Has to be. It is. Was it easy for him to submit? Crying? Tears? Blood? I wouldn't call that easy. But he did it. And aren't you glad he did? Oh, because if he hadn't have done it, you and I wouldn't be sitting up in here saying hallelujah today. And did you know other people's lives are going to be affected by your obedience too? And mine? If I hadn't submitted to the will of God at different times and places, me and you wouldn't be looking at each other today. If you hadn't submitted to God at different places, you wouldn't even be in the room today. Right? Whether we submit or not to his will affects other people's lives, certainly our own family, our children, our grandchildren, our spouse, our friends. You know, one of the greatest things you ever did for your family and friends was go with God all the way. Submit to him and completely do his will. Initially, it can look like you're going farther away from them. Initially, it can look and feel like that you're just, y'all are being separated. You're just losing each other, but you'll see in time to come, you'll be at a place where you can help them. And in time to come, things come full circle, and you'll be so glad. The best favor you ever did for your family and friends is obey God even when they're hollering to you not to do it. Some of the very people that came and tried to talk me out of going into the ministry well, the biggest ones later on pat me on the back, go, boy, you did the right thing. <laughs> boy, you know, because the, the Lord was able to use us to help them. But they were the very ones tried to, did their best to talk me out of it. Yeah. In the beginning, pays not to listen to men, right. but to the Lord. And you're really doing them a favor by obeying even though they don't know it. Read this again. Verse 17. If any man does what? wills to do his will, what will happen? He will know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You will know whether it's God or whether it's man. And that will deliver you from vacillation. And in, see, insecurity is another word for fear. Y'all didn't know that? Thought you did. Insecurity is another word for fear. What, what is it? I, I don't know. And, well, 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 why do you have to be all cringing because you don't know? I, I just, I don't know. You, 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 could, you could relax and go, I don't know. Why you got to be like, ew, I don't know. 
E. <laughs> Go to 2 Corinthians. <laughs> I know you didn't expect this this morning because I didn't. Is it okay? Second Corinthians. Fourth chapter. How many of that sounds appealing to you to be able to know? I'm not talking about being arrogant. I'm not talking about being prideful. I'm just talking about knowing. And that is what real, true, Christ-like boldness is. Uh, some people try to put on boldness, and it's, it's, it's a bad witness. It's hindersome. It's flesh and pride. You know, Paul uh, wrote to his uh, supporters and, and people under him and said, Pray for me that I'd, I'd speak the word, you know, boldly. If that would have been some folk today that wrote back and said, oh, Paul, just be bold. Can you just put on boldness as an act of your will? No. That's why we're on this today. No. If you do, it's just flesh. It's just you. Have you ever come across people that were just pushy? In the name of being bold? Is it godly? Did it make you want to praise the Lord? <laughs> but we're just having a big time in here this morning. Aren't we? Glory to God. I was traveling with some folk, uh, commercial airlines some years ago. And, and uh, this guy, he just jumped on the lady behind the counter and he just was so demanding and so adamant. And I backed off a little bit and he looked at me. I guess he saw I wasn't enjoying it. He said, I'm sorry. He said, but that's just my prophetic anointing. He said, I just. Uh, no, that's just flesh. F-L-E-S-H. Flesh. Got nothing to do with God. But that's what happens when you try to be bold. Why would Paul write and say, y'all pray for me that I'd be bold? Y'all pray for me that I could proclaim this word with boldness. Why would he pr ask for prayer for that? Because boldness is not something you can just put on. Boldness is the result of knowing. Not just intellectual knowledge, but the anointing of knowing. Oh, this is better preaching than you might think. The anointing of knowing. Is there such a thing? Yeah, you have an unction of the Holy One. Unction means anointing. An unction of the Holy One and you know all things. First John 2, 20. And 27 also. Those two verses. The anointing causes you to know. When people vacillate, it's because they're unsure. You, you stop somebody on the road and say, how do you get to such and such? And they say, mm, let me see. Now, you go down here about two miles, may, maybe five miles, I, and you take a left. I, I think it's a left. Could be a right. I, I think it's a left. <laughs> What's their problem? <laughs> they don't know. You pull up to another person, you go, can you tell me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I had to go by that place for 14 years on my way to work every day. You go 3.2 miles this way, you hang a left, and it's right there on the right. They're bold. They don't mince words. They tell you. Are they trying to be arrogant? Are they trying to be pushy? No, they just know. They're sure. And that makes them bold. Hmm? How can you be bold about Jesus? Because you know. How can you be bold about healing? Bold about prosperity? Bold about speaking in tongues? Bold. You don't want to come across pushy and overbearing and arrogant. You don't want to. You already seem strange to people outside the Word. 
Right? We were down in Miami some years ago, uh, one of Brother Kenneth Hagin's meetings, and uh, Holy Ghost meetings, he called them. And there was a bunch of us ministers went in this, in this restaurant together, and it was a nice restaurant. And uh, we all kind of came in like a whirlwind, there's a bunch of us. And uh, a, a lady, very refined uh, dressing lady, uh, tugged on one of the guys and said, uh, excuse me, what, what, what is all this? And, 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 and this guy's a fiery evangelist. He said, oh, we're having a Holy Ghost meeting over here. He said, and she said, hmm. She said, do you have to wear a costume to that? <laughs> She heard ghost. <laughs> he said, no, no. But see, we, we need to realize when we're not in the church building anymore. And we've got to watch about our own uh, jargon and language and phraseology. It's like you're talking another language to these people that are completely outside the word. And if you purposely use lingo that you know people don't understand, it's because you're prideful. If you cared about them, you'd purposely avoid language that you know they won't relate to and you'd use words that you know they do. Simple. How many ever talk to somebody and they're using all this phraseology that they know you don't have a clue about and they want you to ask them to explain it to you because they like feeling superior that they know all this. And that's ugly. It's childish, immature. But even if it's in the most basic language, the Lord shows you how to become all things to all people that you might win some, right? But uh, you don't have to be pushy, but you need to be sure about what you're talking about. You need to know. You need to be sure. Did you find 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 8? This is the spirit of faith. How many know there's a huge difference between the spirit of faith and the spirit of fear? We've not been given the spirit of fear, Romans says, again, into bondage. But we've been given the spirit of the Lord, the, the spirit of adoption. Adoption makes you feel apart, makes you feel comfortable, makes you feel at home. No, no insecurities. Verse 13, he said, we got the same spirit of faith. And in verse 8, he's describing that spirit of faith. He said, we're troubled on every side, yet. What? Now, you may think I've digressed, but I was talking about this several minutes ago. When you're talking about, I don't know. Why does it have to be like this? I don't know. Hmm. Why does I don't know have to be in a cringe? I don't know. Fear has torment, doesn't it? Why, why the body language? Why draw in? Why cringe? There's torment going on. You're being tortured as we speak. Do you know there are people that live like this? They live like this, don't they? You say anything, they jump. Any little old thing shocks them. The door slams. Ha, ah, what's that? I didn't see you. <laughs> yeah, but you knew I was alive. You, <laughs> you knew I was around. <laughs> it's torment. It's bondage. He said, the spirit of faith is, we're troubled on every side, yet what? Not distressed. Not distressed. Is it possible to have trouble all over the place, and yet you are stress and distress free? You learn how to walk by faith, people will think something's wrong with you. 
<laughs> They'll think, bless their heart. They ain't got sense enough to see how much trouble they're in. <laughs> Look at them. Act like they're on a vacation. Don't they know that the world is crashing in around them? If you live by faith like you're supposed to, you can have trouble all around. Yet, come on, read it out loud. Yet what? Yet what? Yet not distressed. How could you not be distressed? Because you know something. Oh, come on, that's not quite strong enough. You, you, know, you know something. My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into different trials and tests and temptations, what's the next part? What's the next part? Come on, what? What? Because you, how in the world can you count it joy in the middle of trials and tribulations? Because you know something. Not because you're wondering about something, because you guess so, hope so, think so, maybe so. You, you know. It makes you sure. It makes you bold. It sets you free. No cringing. Man says, you know about that? You go, no. Nah. <laughs> you mean you don't know what's going to happen with all that? Nope. <laughs> you don't look too bothered about it. Nope. Because <laughs> even though I don't know that, I do know something. I know he'll never leave me. I know he'll never forsake me. I know he'll never let me down. I know he always causes me to triumph. And that keeps my temperature down. <laughs> that, that, that's how you can have trouble all around. And yet... Not in distress. No distress. No distress. Keep reading. Perplexed. But what? Now this, this deals specifically with what we're talking about. Why would you be perplexed? When I hear the word perplexed, I have an image in my mind like a cartoon uh, drawing of somebody with a balloon. You know, where they, they put the thoughts and the words above their head, and it's just a great big question mark. When you're perplexed, why would you be perplexed? Because you don't know. There's stuff you don't know. And did you know there will always be stuff you don't know? Did you, did you know that? <laughs> I don't care if you live 200 years. There's going to be stuff come up on a regular basis and you just are not going to know. And some things you're never going to know in this life. You just, you don't know. But if you don't know, and if you're, can you be perplexed without what? Without what? No despair. Is it possible to just not know all kind of stuff, but not be down about it at all? Hmm? Just have that, just glad to be here look on your face all the time. People go, do you, do you, do you understand this? And you go, no. <laughs> do you, you, you. Do you understand about that? And you go, no. Do you understand why all this happened? You go, nope. But how many know you don't have to be like this? No, I don't know. And it's bothering me. <laughs> it's bothering me. I've got to know. I need to know. If you have to know before you can trust. Oh, come on. Can you see this? You are refusing to walk by faith. You're demanding, God, you got to explain this to me. I got to see this before I can relax. You might as well just tell him, I'm refusing to walk by faith. It doesn't work that way. 
It doesn't work that way on any level. Nobody on the planet can say, God, you reveal yourself to me and then I'll believe. You explain it to me to my satisfaction and then I'll accept it. That's serious stuff with him. It's called evil unbelief, isn't it? It's evil in his eyes. You got to be, you know, uh, Brother Hagin said this uh, for years and it blessed me. He said as a little boy, he could not figure out how a black cow could give white milk and you could churn it and make yellow butter. He tried and tried to figure that out, little boy, and he couldn't. He said, but all the while he's trying to figure it out, he's drinking the milk. Do you have to understand things to enjoy them? No. Probably most of you that drove over here in a car don't have much of an understanding what happened when you put it in D. <laughs> but do you have to know about connecting rods and compression ratios? Do you have to know about fluid viscosities? Huh? Nah, all you got to know is D. D and press the gas. Here we go. <laughs> Wouldn't it be foolish? You, you're still with me, right? Wouldn't it be foolish for you to sit there and put it in D and go, I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> this, uh, no, I can't drive this. Till I understand. You don't fully understand how you walked in here this morning. Do you don't? No, you don't. The brightest doctor in the world doesn't fully understand how you walked in here this morning. You and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. We don't have a clue everything that's going on in this body. Doesn't prevent us from enjoying it though. Can you be troubled with no distress? Can you be? I mean that sounds like an impossible thing to people in the world. You mean troubled but not distressed? Troubled equals distress. No it does not. Not for faith people. Keep reading. Perplexed, but what? Said out loud, I'm not distressed. I am not in despair. Not going to be. You know, I ministered in healing school at Brother Hagin's ministry for years, and on a daily basis, we saw people that were uh, diagnosed terminal. And one of the biggest things we had to deal with was fear of death. Sometimes on a Monday morning, before you got started, you could just feel death in the room. People are wheezing, people are on machines, people are trying to, and people are scared, scared, scared. And sometimes they look shocked. Sometimes the Lord had had me just do it to shake them up. I'd, I'd just come in and just throw my Bible down, prop my foot up, and I'd say, So, they say you're going to die. <laughs> Look at you like. <laughs> no, he didn't just say, it. hey. And then I'd make it worse. I'd go on and say, well, I said, you should have already known that. I said, the Lord tears his coming just this much longer. We all going to die. You going to die. Your cat's going to die. Your dog's going to die. Your parakeet and your goldfish. All your flowers going to die. True or not? The Lord tarries just this long. None of us making out of here alive. <laughs> and yet people act so shocked like, they said I was going to die. <laughs> yeah, are you going to die? I mean, you know, the Lord's coming soon, but if he tarried his time just a few minutes, that's too long for us. <laughs> 
If he tarries just, just this long, you're going to die. Shouldn't be, you shouldn't be distressed about it. You shouldn't be in despair about it. If somebody says, you're going to die, you go, I know, unless he comes back real soon. I know. So what? You too. <laughs> you are too. But for the child of God, there doesn't have to be any fear, any despair, any distress. You well, I don't know what's going to happen when I die. There you go again. It's no wonder people have migraines, and stomach trouble, neck problems, back problems, high blood pressure. Why? Because it's hard to live like this. <laughs> Said out loud, no distress. No distress. No despair. No despair. Why? Because you do know something. You do know something. You know your name's in the Lamb's book of life. You know. You know, if you fell off this chair right now and breathed your last, no problemo. Right? No. What do you do? Step out of your body. You look at it and you go, wow, that's over. And then you go, I feel good. <laughs> I knew that I would. <laughs> well, didn't, don't you know that you will? And you look up and your big angel sitting there smiling. You go, hi. <laughs> Glory to God. What have we to fear? That's why we can stand by the grave of loved ones and friends, our closest companions. And quote 1 Corinthians 15 and say, death, grave, where's your victory? Where's your sting? You can get sassy at the graveside. Come on, somebody help me out this morning. You, you can stand by a casket, by a grave. And you don't, you know, everybody might not be ready for it, so you might not want to make a public display of it. But you, you can stand there and you can go, grave, where's your victory? Where's your sting? I don't feel it. I don't feel, oh yeah, you may have a tear running down your cheek. You got a soul. You got emotions. You're not going to be able to visit them tomorrow or maybe the next day. But you know, they're not there. They're not there. They're out of here. I'm going to see them just right away. There is no defeat here because even this body, this body that they're planning is going to be raised incorruptible. There is no defeat. There is no defeat. That's why you can say, grave, where's your victory? Death, where's your sting? Where, it, I don't feel it. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. He overcame it. He won over death, hell, and the grave. And his victory is our victory. It's ours. Can you say glory to God? He goes on to say, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Stand on your feet, please. Singers and players, can y'all come back? Whew. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say, glory to God. Glory to God. Just play something softly, guys. Just play something softly. 
We want to be doers of the word, not just hearers only, don't we? What will cause you to be free from the spirit of fear and distress and not knowing and perplexity? It's because you know something else. You know and you're sure. What, if you've been clouded on things, what will cause you to know? You've got to be willing to do his will. Everybody close your eyes for a bit and maybe lift up your heart, lift up your hands. Pray in the spirit some. Lord, show us about your will, about willingness to do your will. Oh, kombere dechdi, eleven and bangzi, ech demanda ko och donesi, ech sindayane onte komeling dingiana, emen desnia tafande pona onte pona joya, esikia, adianes nias, adianes. Nias. Pray this out loud with me, then we'll pray some more like this. Say it out loud, Father God. I know that in you is light and no darkness, no confusion. And any confusion I've had is not from you, it's not from walking with you, it's my fault. I'm asking you. Work in me to will and do of all your good pleasure, to desire and to be willing to do your will. I say by faith, I delight to do your will, O oh God. I delight to please you, to submit to your word and your perfect will for me. Anything you've shown me in times past that I ignored, that I pushed down or pushed aside, that I was unwilling to submit to or do, I ask you, show me again. Have mercy on me. Make it plain and clear to me, I ask in Jesus' name. And no matter what it is, or what my mind or my flesh has felt about it, I'm willing, by faith, I'm willing to do your will. What I see not, show me. What I've forgotten, remind me of, please. What I've not understood, make known to me in Jesus' name. Now pray in the Spirit some more, please. Anda asuli enengs ni klias en pa suidian among exia chitafaro exia atafaro axia. Oh, axia atufara panamarude elipa lagano elimpantalias elimpandanonye implis de meninta. Oh, biana siakoji isia dian gogjian mende imian da asutre emia emia emia. Oh, in me a nasa tourstri, is divile make me axe, in mendiganaman bread di, O fatelos tu, O fatelo sita, lenda, casto, Lord, specific, lamba di cindi, put your finger, nende bagzo, kite belene otushne, give unto us an, an illumination. And enlightening, and the baangra okogra etidre etidia ostia embestia abastia ebestia. Yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Hallelujah. Go ahead. <clears throat>